In this section, we'll be talking about distance, time, and average speed. And we need to start by defining some terms very clearly. And first, we'll talk about position. The position of an object is simply where it is. So if something is moving, that means its position is changing over time. We can indicate an object's position by using a number if we imagine a number line or a coordinate system like you see here. So in a 100 meter race, for example, or something like a football field, there are typically carefully measured markings every yard or every meter. And um, pulling out of a stoplight in a car, there's not markings on the road. But in, in cases where there aren't markings, where there isn't an actual number line there, you can imagine one being there. So when a car pulls out of a stoplight, you could imagine the zero point being right at the beginning, and you could imagine numbers along the road, and you could indicate the car's position at any time simply by naming that number. So if this guy were running in a race here, right here you would say his position is at 20 meters, and we usually use a variable. We might say x, his position is 20 meters, and so the variable x indicates position, or sometimes you see d used, d for distance. In this case, he's gone 20 meters from the start here. The, uh, the exact variable that you use isn't critical. It's just important that you understand that we can indicate the position mathematically as a number by visualizing the motion along this coordinate system. And whenever we have something moving like this guy running, even if there's not a physical number line lying there, we can imagine one being there. Now we're going to start by considering one dimensional motion. That means this guy moves along the line. A line is one dimensional. He can go forward or he can go backward, but he can't turn left or right. He can't go up and down. Let's assume that his motion is just confined to this line, like a train on a railroad track. Imagine a perfectly straight railroad track and the train could go forward or back, but it can't really turn off the tracks or lift up into the air. Or just imagine a car on a road and it can go in forward or reverse. We typically have a number line to indicate the position and positive is toward one end and negative is toward the other. So if he's moving this way we would call that motion in the positive direction and if he's moving that way we would call that motion in the negative direction. And we typically, it's very common, to use the positive and negative signs to indicate direction. Now in the real world things typically move in more than one dimension. If you have a castle here for example and you're going to set up a catapult and lob rocks at the castle. So here's a catapult over here. And it's got this mechanism here for taking a boulder and sending it over there. So you're throwing rocks at the catapult, or throw, using the catapult to throw rocks at the castle. Well obviously the rock moves horizontally, it goes to the right, but it also moves vertically, it goes up and comes back down. So there's left-right motion and there's up-down motion. Or as we would say, horizontal and vertical motion. In this case we need a two-dimensional coordinate system to indicate the object's position. And we typically set up two number lines like this at right angles and we call one of them the x-axis and one of them the y-axis. And in order to specify something's position in the plane this, an object can move around in the, in the plane, not just moving along a line. We have to specify the x and the y value. For example, if I said x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 1.5, well, look at my x-axis first here. x is equal to 2, that's right here, the 2 on the x-axis. And when we say y is equal to 1.5, look at my y-axis, 1.5 is about right there on the y-axis. So I'll mark those. If I draw little dotted lines and imagine this point right there, that is the point at which x equals 2, that's from, from the origin, from the center right here, that's 2 to the right, 2 horizontally, and 1.5 vertically. So that point is indicated by these two numbers and it would actually be more commonly written like this parentheses 2 comma 
1.5. And this is an ordered pair. We understand that the order here is always x first and y second. So they call that, call that an ordered pair. The point here is that in two dimensions, we can indicate the position by using two variables. Any point in this entire xy plane could be indicated by, by specifying the x and the y values. And now just to be complete, we'll talk about three dimensions because we live in a three dimensional world and a lot of things move around in all three dimensions, like a hot air balloon. It can move left, right, it can move forward and back, and it can move up and down. Or an airplane or a helicopter would be a really good example. Helicopters obviously can move up and down and left and right and forward and back. So for things moving in three dimensions, we need three variables, and we typically call them x, y, and z. So let's call this our x-axis, and we'll call this our y-axis, as we did before, and we'll call this one z. Now for the x-axis, we typically have positive to the right and negative to the left. And for the y-axis, we typically have positive up and negative down. And for z right here, we'll have positive coming this way and negative going that way. And you need to interpret this picture in three dimensions. You're looking at a flat image on the page or a flat image on the screen, but you need to imagine this z-axis is really coming at you here, pointing out of the page or out of the screen and it going back this way, going back into the page or into the screen. So you're looking at a perspective view here. The point I'm making here is that we could use three numbers, an, a value for x, a value for y, and a value for z to indicate position in three dimensions. For example, what if I said that x is equal to 3, y is equal to 1, and z is equal to 2, or that would be the point 3, 1, 2. Again, we have this ordering of numbers. It's understood that x is first, and then y, and then z. So how do we draw this in here? Well, if x is 3, that puts us out to this point right here, x is 3. Okay. And y is 1, and z is 2. I'm going to take the z here. Look, look on the z-axis. That would be out to 1, and then out to 2, and then out to 3. So Let's, um, let's imagine z is 2, which is right there. And I'm going to draw a little horizontal line here. So try to imagine this as being a flat rectangle, lying flat. So this point right here is kind of floating out in space out here in front of the x-axis and to the right of the z-axis. We still need to have 1 on the y, so we have to go up 1 from there. So here's a point right there, and you need to imagine that as out in front and over to the right and up just a little bit. And that's a little bit hard to picture because we're trying to represent three dimensions on a flat screen, which is inherently difficult to do. But the point you should understand is that for three dimensions, we need three variables. Now, you don't have to worry about that much for right now, because right now we're studying motion along a line. We're going to be dealing with one-dimensional motion, so we're just going to have an x value, and it's either going to be moving uh, in the positive x direction or the negative x direction. And we'll be discussing measurements of position and distance along the x-axis.